Sing me a story of Frodo and the Ring, fearless and bold, tired and cold. So that his side had an elf blade called Sting, crossing a miserable land. Wouldn't retreat, just followed his feet. Now and for always. I think this story and specifically this production of this story is so special and we've seen that in the fact that people have travelled from so Finland, from yeah. the States, from all yeah. over the world literally to come to Wagner to come and see this production. Lord of the Rings is this, it's this incredible collection of material that people are so passionate about but it's three long books um, and in the films when they were made there was three long films um, and all of those films are actually longer, each one in, in isolation is longer than the musical. I actually think that it's cut up pretty well. Uh, you basically get like the like the fellowship is the first act, uh, and then it's like the second half where they it's sort of cut up a bit more and it's a bit more creative liberty, should we say? But uh, I think it really uh, hones in on the uh, the hobbity aspects and that sort of uh, the way that the, the the story's told through the hobbit's eyes, and I think it does a really good job of uh, keeping that throughout the whole show. So uh, this has been massively truncated, but it's been beautifully, beautifully kind of streamlined into this amazing piece of storytelling that it's so focused and so distilled. So one of the great things about this production is that because we use, we use this glorious setting that's directly behind me of the Watermill Theatre as the, the beginning of a show and the end of a show and then they move inside for the middle part of the show. Well, this place is literally the Shire, it's isn't very it? Very nice. Yeah. So it's really exciting to be doing Lord of the Rings here because it means that when the audience arrive, it is like coming into the Shire, isn't it? We're yeah. all playing hobbits. They feel like they're hobbits in and amongst yeah. us. And it's like that sense of celebration and fun and involvement from the very start is so exciting with this story. Uh, but obviously, you know, the British weather is what the British weather is. So we've already done several versions of the show where we've been inside for both parts of the outside bit or variations of, of the above. So there's a, a number of variations, but we always try the best of our ability to get outside whenever we can. Because, you know, this is the Shire. Uh, it's literally the place where Tolkien kind of based a lot of his, a lot of his story. <laughs> So I'd say it's, it's a challenge to fit 20 actor musicians playing big instruments yeah. into the Watermill Theatre. It's the biggest cast I think they've had here. I for, think so, yeah. And definitely the biggest project they've done here, which is so exciting to be part of. I was supposed to be playing the double bass originally. And then I think we realised double bass is too big for that theatre uh, when you've got however many other instruments. So I think, I think that was one of the biggest challenges, is actually getting us all on stage at the same time. And then we go across all these vast landscapes, right? Yeah. So we start in the gardens and then we're inside and we're in the Mines of Moria and we're in Lothlorien and creating all these beautiful, amazing spaces in that theatre. Simon's just done an incredible job of that. It's, it's so special. I think one of the things that's interesting about this show is because it's a very intimate theatre and this show was written originally for an enormous kind of uh, production that was based around spectacle. But I think what's astonishing about this is that because it is intimate, it's, we've had to find the real truth of those relationships. I think versatile, that theatre has become the most versatile space I've ever worked in. Uh, just, it, I don't know, it's just amazing how, we, how it's managed to have us all in it and create the spaces from Lord of the Rings so just beautifully. Yeah, it's great. One of the kind of really interesting things about playing Gollum and one of the biggest challenges with that is that it's very rare for a part to have been so defined by somebody else's performance. Uh, Andy Serkis does the most astonishing performance in the films. Um, and I think it's really important to honour that, um, the honour the, honor the legacy of that when you're doing that because to, to some extent that's what the fans are expecting. But then you've got to find your own way through that to make it truthful and to also make it sustainable for eight shows a week and to uh, and to also kind of find how you do that without CGI frankly. I am certain there's a future life for this production. Yes please, please. we would love to see. <laughs> no I'm joking that's a bit beggy isn't it? Um, <laughs> I even have because I'm also a producer myself 
So I've had people contacting me about the future life of this production. So I have absolutely no doubt this show will continue. It's such a special story for so many people. It's like one of the biggest stories ever. Um, it's just, there's something in it for everyone. And yeah, I just think, I think there's, if, if there is a life, it would be great. <laughs> I would be very happy. <laughs>Do you want the what's on stage to be very visible? Always. Okay. <laughs> and I think it's really focusing in on those, on, on the humanity of these hobbits. Can you say humanity of hobbits? Hobbitiness of hobbits. We'll say that instead. <laughs> <laughs> Just like, oh my gosh, everything's flashing before my eyes. There is a wet weather plan if it is a bit rainy. But if it's a little bit drizzly, we say, I mean, bah. Sam and Frodo go to Mordor and back. So we can part yeah. with a bit of drizzle. Yeah. <laughs> bring, you know, bring your brolly.